It's Friday, and you know what that means. We're on earlier this week because of the NHL playoffs. Pucking crazy, isn't it? I'm John Rankin with my review of AEW Rampage. But yes, this week, and at least next week, it's going to be on earlier. I don't know if it's going to be on as early as it was this week, but whatever. I actually don't mind it being on early because it gets it out of the way, and maybe it's just because I'm absolutely insane, and I am, but I actually didn't mind this episode. At least until the main event, and I will explain why. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. So Excalibur, Taz, Ricky Starks, and the Grand Wizard himself, Chris Jericho. He calls himself the Wizard? Nope, he's the Grand Wizard. You know why, and I don't fucking care if you're offended. So anyway, Tony Storm, Ruby Soho, Jamie Hayter, and Britt Baker in a tag team match to kick off Rampage, and perfectly fine during this? Perfectly fine. Good Fucking God, there was a lot of beauty and a lot of talent in this ring, and <clears throat> it was really nice that they finally found Ruby Soho and allowed her to be on one of the mainstream programs. I know she's been on Elevation and Dark. I haven't watched that much Elevation or Dark in the past three months. Why? It got to the point where it was just programming, and there really wasn't all that much to it outside of maybe three out of the nine matches they'd feature each week. So, Pittsburgh sucks! Pittsburgh sucks, champs! And... Um, we got, the crowd was into it, there were some nice moves, it was nice to see Tony and Jamie, uh, tangle up with each other, for obvious reasons. Um, Ruby and Britt would be a nice feud <coughs> outside of, like, the, uh, outside of the championship, that is, since, obviously, neither of them are holding titles. I wouldn't mind seeing them have a series of matches. Maybe it would actually help spice things up with the women's division, you could have more than one match. And maybe you could actually put some effort into it so the crowd isn't ice goddamn cold like they were for the Dynamite main event. But nevertheless, um, there's a melee, all the moves, every single goddamn move in the known fucking universe and other universes. And Tony tops Brit one, two, three. It was nice to see Tony top Brit. And I'd like to see Tony tie it anyway, moving on from that. This was nice. Good match. And Eddie Kingston calls in and says that, well, Jericho, after what you did, my wife, uh, you know, had fear in her eyes when she saw me. I'm going to make you feel the same goddamn fear. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm going to keep coming and coming and coming. Lol. But this is kind of cool. I can't, I like how <coughs> they did something like this as far as a way to build a feud. Please do the right thing and have Eddie Kingston win because the few, Eddie's been trying really goddamn hard. The stuff with Jericho has not been very good. Eddie's been doing his best to um, really just push this thing along because Jericho's been dragging his goddamn feet. But if Eddie Kingston wins a double or nothing, I'm all for it. Unless they stretch this motherfucking thing out and they have a multi-man match and then build the singles match again. There you go. I mean, we're, obviously this feud will not be over until Eddie finally gets the big blow off, even though he beat Jericho on pay-per-view. But there we go. <coughs> Sterling and Tony Nese, they're backstage. And Nice wants a shot at Danhausen. Okay. So, who? against J.D. Drake. I like J.D. Drake. I don't really see why he gets so much hate. I'm not saying he's going to be a world champion in any mainstream wrestling company, but he's worked well on the indies. I've been impressed with the stuff he's done on AEW programming. He's got some skills. He's got a good territorial look, and I mean that with respect. He moves well for a guy that maybe doesn't have the prototypical wrestling body, and I, again, mean that with respect. He's a good athlete, and he did the job here for Hook. Hook beat him pretty goddamn easily. <clears throat> um, Hook even headbutted a goddamn chop. That's new. Haven't seen that. And got the red rum on about 90 seconds. So it served its purpose. Here's Danhausen. He says, Hook, it's Danhausen. As if we couldn't fucking tell that. He offers to shake his hand because apparently it's Hook's birthday. I, I guess. <laughs> and Hook shoves him down. But then Danhausen leaves a gift. It was a bag of chips with a bow on it. Because Hook likes chips. Okay, don't mess this up with Hook, please. I kind of like that he's being taken seriously. Please don't mess this up. But uh, whatever. So FTR is interviewed. They are baby faces now. And about the Owen Hart tournament, Dax says, I have to win this for my family, for my team, and for the hearts. Great shit. And Dax even admitted, you know, you guys booed me with good reason because I was not a very good guy. Then we get Yuka Sakazaki, the magical girl. I, 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 I don't actually know how to sing the rest of the song because I don't speak Japanese. Against Riho. Riho in pink and black. Riho has returned from whatever arm injury she had. And look out, it's an Owen Hart qualifier. And the I think the match went a 
It went maybe a couple of minutes long, and Riho has just kicked out of everything. Like, seemingly from the time she showed up on AEW programming, and when she came back after the pandemic <laughs> restrictions got lifted a little bit more, she still kicks out of everything. Even though she has taken losses, it's fucking ridiculous. You have to basically drop, like, I don't know, you have to drop, like, a fucking full-grown planet on her to beat her. But it is what it is. I like Yuka Sakazaki because she's never been a champion in a mainstream wrestling promotion. It's always been in, like, I don't actually even know what the promotion is she wrestles for. She hasn't been a champion like Riho, which is probably why I have my view skewed of Riho just a little bit. That being said, fine match. Um, <coughs> And it was cool that Riho, again, was in pink and black. Uh, Yuka targeted the knee to miss a magical girl splash. And then we got near falls. We got top rope flatliner, which looked flush. And, of course, Riho ends up hitting the most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling surprise roll up one, two, three. And then Spears is backstage talking about Wardlow. He's trying to sound dark and mysterious. That's adorable. So, in the ring, Lambert, Ethan, and Scorpio. By the way, the sheepish lion, Dan Lambert. Baltimore crabs. He'd rather get Baltimore crabs from somebody from a streetwalker, basically. Oh, man, Dan sure loves to talk about them streetwalkers. Texas Street Ranger. So, they go on about Sammy and Ty. Here's Kazari, and he wants to shot at Scorpio. And Scorpio says, things are going to change. That other title's going to go in the American Top Team bin, or, you know, sh on the shelf, or whatever it is. And he's going to be the true champion. He's going to face Scorpio. And it's not going to be passed around like Ty Conte backstage. Which is kind of funny. And Frankie, you got your shot. Jungle Boy then attacks Ricky Starks, because they're having an FTW Championship match on Dynamite. And then Takashita... Takashita? Takash... Takash... Ita. I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. I'm still trying to get it right. Taking on Jay Lethal with Sanjay Dutt and Giant Gonzalez Silva Jr. Sweet fucking Christ, this experiment is not going to work. <laughs> it was fine. We get a distraction after it looks like that Takas guy uh, got the victory. But no, distraction by Dutt and the bald shiny head you can see from space. And the Queefal Injection 1, 2, 3... And the best friends show up. Because that's what we fucking need, is fucking best friends on a program in 2022. Giant Silva Jr., Gonzalez, is not any good. Here's Joe with a pipe. We get security, and that's it. That's it. It wasn't the best ending. And I don't care about this Lethal Joe feud, even though I think the match will be fine. Because Dutt... Dutt's a good athlete, and Dutt can be a good spokesperson, but Giant Gonzalez Silva Jr. is just not going to do... He's not going to do it. It's not going to fucking work. I'm not saying he's not trying, but with Giants like this, it's not going to work as well as they think. Because this ain't 1990. The same with, like, when they tried to steal some television ratings, maybe even a clash with Elegante. Anyway, so yeah, that was what it was. Agree, disagree, what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Redland. I'll see you soon.